Save money, live better, Walmart. <laughs> this video is not sponsored by Walmart, but I am gonna share ways that I am planning to simplify my life this year in order to save money and live better. I'm glad you're here to join me. If you're new here, my name is Laura and I share all kinds of motherhood and homemaking videos here on my YouTube channel. We cover a lot of topics over here. We have a lot of fun. So I'd love for you to join me and subscribe. If you don't want to, that's fine, but at least give me a like. That would be much appreciated. I do not claim to be a minimalist. I think minimalism is different for everybody, but I do desire to live a simple life that is clutter-free, not having excess things that we don't actually need in our home. And today I'm gonna to share with you ways that I am simplifying my life, specifically things that I am not buying anymore. At the end of this video, I'm also gonna share some super cool hacks that you can implement today. I have done this recently and I've seen such a huge difference. So stay tuned to the end of this video. Hint, it has to do with your phone. But without further ado, let's get on with my list of things I do not buy anymore. First of all, if you buy any of these things, no shame. There's probably things that you don't buy that I do purchase. This is just a list of things that I am no longer buying. Does not mean that you can't buy these things. I'm not saying that this is like the perfect list. At the very least, I hope to just encourage you that there are lots of things out there that you actually don't need. So first up is coffee, meaning coffee when I'm out and about, you know, Starbucks coffee, a coffee here at a little coffee shop. I don't buy those anymore. I used to quite a bit actually as a little treat, but we enjoy our coffee at home. Honestly, I just like it better at home. And I have found some really fun coffee recipes that I can make right here at home, save so much money that way. Next is plastic water bottles, as in like, water bottles that you use, you know, buy in a case you use, you toss. I have a water bottle that I love that I use all the time and I refill it. We have filtered water here at home. So there's just no need to buy the plastic ones. Next is bread. I have started baking our bread from scratch here at home simply because I enjoy doing it. It is healthier for us. And at this point in my life, in this season, I have the time to do it. So I might as well do it. And truthfully, it doesn't actually take that long. And I find the process really enjoyable, making my dough in the evening, you know, letting it rise. It's just, it smells good. I really do enjoy it. There are the odd times where I might, you know, in like an emergency need to buy bread. But as a general rule, I am not purchasing bread weekly in our like normal grocery pickup. The nail salon. I do not go to the nail salon anymore. I never did consistently, but it would be kind of something that I would do, you know, before going on vacation or just when it was warmer out the summer, I would go get a pedicure, but I don't think... I'm gonna do that anymore because it's expensive. We don't need to be spending our money on that in this season, as well as I can just paint my nails here at home. Cheap beauty products. I want to find cleaner beauty, beauty items. There are some that I've been able to replace, but still looking for some good options. Subscriptions. I do have a Spotify subscription and we do have Netflix. We have seriously considered canceling Netflix because we just don't watch it that much. Next is renting movies. Because we do pay for Netflix, we really try if we do watch something to watch it on there as opposed to, you know, renting something online for five bucks or what have you. Also something that I hope to do along with this is actually borrow DVDs from the library. We do have a DVD player. And so I really want to utilize that more if there's like, you know, we're having a planned movie night, see if the library has that movie, check it out for free and then return it. That's something I want to do more of. Pop. We don't drink soda, so we don't buy pop. That's something that we already do, but we'll continue doing because we just don't need it. Okay, trending impulse buys. This one, there's so many things out there online that other people use or that just look really appealing. And I know that I am often tempted to just get that thing or spend the money to have that because I want it. And that's the only reason. And so I'm being more intentional of my purchases, thinking, is this something we actually need or is it just something that I want? And of course, budgeting plays a big role into that and it's very, very helpful. Beauty services, as in like facials, eyebrow waxing, you know, eyelash extensions. Those are things that, some things I have done in the past, um, but I just don't anymore. I don't see the need for it for myself cheap jewelry. I don't remember the last time that I bought like inexpensive 
jewelry. It always looks so pretty when you're at the mall or whatever, but I just don't really reach for it. And I have my necklace that Silas gave me for Christmas, I believe. It has our initials and Danny's birth flower. So that is what I wear every day, as well as my earrings that are I wore for our wedding. They're pearls, they're gold, I'm good quality, and these are what I wear pretty much every day. So I do still have some jewelry that is cheaper that I'll wear occasionally, but I might just get rid of it because I don't wear it enough to actually make it worth having. It's just taking up space. But if I do buy jewelry, it will be a quality piece that isn't gonna like turn my ears green or something like that. Ooh, this is a good one. Greeting cards, as in thank you cards, baby shower cards, wedding cards, birthday cards. Those things are expensive. If you buy them at the store, I have before, they're like $5 at least, which is crazy. And most of the time, the people you're giving them to probably don't keep them. So what I've started doing is just making my own cards at home. And I have also received homemade cards and those are the ones that are just the most meaningful. I have some still that friends have given me for our baby showers, things like that. They're hand painted or just like a simple, handmade card. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. You can just get scrapbook paper and fold it or print some from online. If that's totally not your thing, then I would encourage you to purchase greeting cards, baby shower cards, birthday cards, all those sorts of things from a local business, from an artist who is actually making those things. That will mean so much as opposed to just buying them from the store. Electronics. My husband and I are not super like electronic people. We have a TV. We own one. It's in our living room. It was free. He got it from like an old roommate a long, long time ago and it's ancient, uh, but it works great and it serves our purposes. It's not like that big and we've considered upgrading mainly because if we like have friends over to watch sports or like to have a movie night or something, it is kind of like, oh, come over and watch this on our crappy TV. <laughs> but um, for now, we're going to keep it and it meets our needs and for us it's not worth spending money on. Also phones. I have a iPhone 8 I believe. It's a 7 or 8. I'm not even sure. I've had it for years. Same thing with my husband Silas. He's had his phone for years. We use them to communicate with each other and check the weather and we don't need we don't need a, anything more than that. So again personal preference baby food, at least for this season, while I only have one child, it is very doable for me to make our own baby food. I just steam veggies, steam whatever, or just even blend up our chicken and veggies that we're having for dinner and make a puree, freeze ahead of time. It's very, very doable. So as long as I am able to do that, it is much more economical. It's much better for my baby because he's eating real whole foods. So I plan to do that for as long as possible. Obviously different seasons are different for different reasons and if you buy baby food, no shame. I'm sure one day I probably will too. But for now, I'm making my own. Pet supplies, we don't have any pets. I would love to have a dog one day, but not yet. So we don't have any pets. Don't need to buy anything for pet supplies. <sighs> Excessive plants. I, I do enjoy plants in our home. I went through like a couple year season where I was like, plant lady and wanted to have all these fun plants and take care of them and have pretty pots and that was great um, but a lot of them have died and I'm sad to say that I have tossed some some got moldy I don't know if they were being overwatered, but in our home there's not like a ton of great places to put plants in the sunlight and so it's just like not conducive to have a lot of plants we have a few that I hope to survive they're doing well they've been thriving for years but so yeah i don't really want to buy any more plants toxic candles this is one i've been doing for a few years but i don't buy toxic candles anymore hair appliances as in like hair heat things i have a blow dryer which i don't hardly ever use i only use it if i'm like in a rush and need to blow dry my hair and i have a flat iron that i've had for years i use it to curl my hair and straighten my hair, which I don't normally straighten my hair, but it works great and I don't need any fancy curling machines. It just takes up space, in my opinion. New furniture. We are very avid Facebook Marketplace 
furniture shoppers. I would say probably 90% of our furniture is from Marketplace, other than our bed, a couch that my husband had before we got married that he got from Ikea, and our coffee bar table we bought when we were first married, which was like our dining room table or everything table in our apartment. But other than that, everything we have, we have scored some really great deals that way. And so we have no reason to buy new furniture. Maybe one day, but not in this season right now. Reusable water bottles. So I have a water bottle that I use all the time. I have a couple different options that we've just acquired over the years. So I'm not buying any more, even though there seems to be like water bottles that become popular and you know, it's marketed that like you need this, but I'm happy with the water bottles that I have. I don't need any more. Expensive journals. This is one Oh, I'm so tempted by like pretty journals and they're packaged so beautifully and they look so, so nice. But I, I do like having a journal. I get mine from wherever for like $5. I do not want to spend a lot of money on journals, even though there's so many that are just really, really lovely. And I do love the beautiful, beautiful journals, but I like the ones that are just plain, plain lines, empty makes it simple and I can use them for whatever. New kids books. I have recently discovered Thrift Books. It's an online thrifting website where you can buy books secondhand and I got some recently. They are in amazing condition. Like they, they seem brand new and I have no problem spending half the amount of money on kids books if they're a little bit used. It's a great option. I know there's other ones that are online too. Of course, even thrift stores. I always love to look at thrift stores for kids books. Drugstore shampoo. I bought drugstore shampoo for years and years and I can never figure out why my hair was always like so coated feeling. It was like I would rinse it and it would still feel like there was shampoo and conditioner and it was just gunky. And I realized it's the cheap shampoo I've been using for years and years. And so I have a shampoo that I've been using. It was a subscription program and ended up just being way too much money. So I've canceled that and moved on to a different shampoo that I'm really enjoying. And it's not that expensive. It's I get it from the health food store and it's like $10 a bottle. Very affordable. Perfume. I'm not like a huge scents person. I've never really been hugely into perfumes and I've found that deodorant is good enough and yeah, I just don't need don't need the perfume. Drinks when we are out to eat. Um I just get water. It's better for me. It's free usually. <laughs> And I just think I already don't drink enough water. So if we're going out to eat, I should probably just get water. Haircuts for my husband and son. I'm not cutting his hair yet, but I do plan to once he is of the hair cutting age. I've been cutting my husband's hair since COVID actually, because he needed a haircut very badly. And that's been working great for us. There's been, you know, I've it's been a learning process. Um, there's been a few minor mistakes I've made, but he's very trusting of me. <laughs> he's glad that I cut his hair because it saves us money. And so that works out great. Something else I will not be buying anymore is fictional books. This is something I've maybe bought a few in the past, but I just don't need them. If I am buying a book, it's going to be a book that I will want for years to come. Maybe a theological book or like a devotional book, something that I know that I'll probably refer back to, something I can highlight and mark up. But like fictional novels, I don't need them. I can get them from the library. The one exception that maybe I would get is like a very beautiful edition of Little Women because that's my favorite novel ever. But that would be something like that's not even on my list of things to get. That would be something in the future. Maybe my husband will get that for my birthday or something like that. That would be great if he's watching this. There's a hint for you. Ooh, this is a tough one for me. Highlighters and pens. I think it's the teacher in me that loves writing utensils and you know stationery like school supplies I go crazy going to Staples is like a mini vacation for me and I have highlighters I have pens that I love they should last me a long long time therefore I don't need to buy any more 
even if they are the most beautiful pens or highlighters I've ever seen in my life. I just don't need them. New baskets. I love thrifting baskets. Baskets are expensive. If you buy them new, they are very, very pricey. And thrifting, you can find some unique ones. I found some cool ones over the years and they're a lot cheaper. Multiple eyeshadows. I usually just use one color of eyeshadow, but I like having a packet of like maybe three or four options so that if you know, I'm dressing up a little bit more, I can do some different definition things or whatever. I'm not a huge makeup person, if you can't tell already, but multiple eyeshadows, I don't need different color options. That's just overwhelming for me. Also a highlighter. I've never used highlighter. I think it just makes me look shiny and I already am kind of oily and so I don't need the extra shine. And yeah, I never use it, so I don't buy it. Cute exercise clothes. I used to think if I had cute exercise clothes, I would exercise more. And that's just not true. It doesn't work like that. And so I have my one pair of good quality leggings and t-shirts. That's good enough for me. All right, I believe last on my list is uncomfortable shoes. Something I've been thinking about and curating a more comfortable shoe collection over the past few years. I don't have that many shoes, but the shoes that I do have are very comfortable very good for my feet and that is something that I am willing to invest in is good quality footwear because you use them all the time and your feet are important because your entire body is literally putting weight on your feet. So that's something I am willing to invest in. A few things that I will actually be buying more of is good quality clothing that I actually like or actually love and enjoy wearing. If you didn't see my massive closet declutter, I'll link that video down below. I got rid of so much of my clothes that I just didn't wear anymore, it didn't fit. And ever since then, I've been very, very, very intentional on buying clothes that are good quality, that I like, that fit me, and that I will have for years to come. And because of that, I now have a smaller wardrobe and I found that very freeing. And also I don't buy clothes that often. I don't need that many clothes. I do laundry every week. And nobody's ever said to me, uh, Laura, you wore that. You wore that dress to church last week. No one's ever said that to me. I don't think people notice our clothes as much as we think they probably do. So having a small wardrobe works great for me. I have considered doing like a spring capsule wardrobe. So if that sounds interesting to you, let me know if you want to see that video. I think that could be fun, fun to make. I'll also be buying more non-toxic cleaning supplies. I've been researching different brands and trying to find things that will work for us. I have tried out some that I love. That's something that I will continue to do as well as buying more health products such as good quality collagen, um, supplements like greens powder, all those things I think are really, really important, especially having been breastfeeding and postpartum and all the hormones and crazy things going on. I want to be taking better care of our bodies. That's something I want to focus more attention on. And by saving money on all these other things that I'm not buying anymore, I hope to put that money towards things that actually do matter and will benefit us long-term. Those are just a few things that I will be buying more of. Now, I did promise you guys that I would show you some hacks that you can implement today to simplify your life. I have to give credit where credit was due. I first heard of this idea from Margaret Matheny and it's all about simplifying your phone. Genius, genius ideas. I'm gonna share it with you. You can do this like right now in like two minutes. I did this recently and I noticed such a difference when I'm on my phone. For me, my phone is to communicate with people I love and to check the weather and directions and maybe like Google something. I have a couple apps that I use on here, but I'm not like sitting on my phone. I do not want to be attached to it. I want it to be away from me as much as possible. And I don't want it to be something where I'm like just giving my time and attention to. I also don't want it to be something that is overstimulating. So these hacks I'm about to share with you have helped so, so much. First of all, is to set a background image on your phone that is very calming. So this is my background. It is a very calm picture and I used to have photos of like my husband and son, but I see them every day. I don't need them on my phone. All these like bright colors, things like that. Okay, when you open my phone, it's simply a dull background and you'll notice my apps are not there. You have to actually slide over 
to access my apps and they're all categorized in different sections. Very, very helpful. Other things that I did was in my settings, I changed it all to dark mode as opposed to white mode. So the lights are just darker. It's not as stimulating. I have changed my ringtone and my text tones to sounds that are not like super um, attention grabbing or loud or obnoxious. They're very calming. Okay, the ringtone that I have is slow rise. Like how calm is that? And the text tone is called bamboo. It's just like a happy little sound. It's not super attention seeking. You may not know, but you can also lower the volume. And I also have lessened the brightness in my phone so that it's not as bright. And then a few other things is the apps that I have. I don't have social media on my phone other than Instagram because I do use that for with my business. But on Instagram, I have a time limit. So once my time limit is up, I actually have, I'm like locked out of the app. My husband has the code that he has to input. That was something that I asked him to do because I did not want to be caught scrolling on my phone. So if I'm on Instagram, it's because I'm, you know, sharing something of importance and I'm not just sitting there wasting time. I also don't have Pinterest on my phone anymore. If I do need to go on Pinterest for a recipe or something, I do it on my laptop. So I'm trying to shift as much from my phone to my laptop as possible. And I just find it so much better to work on there. It's better for my posture. It's bigger. It's better for my eyes. I wear my blue light glasses. Oh, also on my phone, I should mention, I turned off all the notifications so that the only things I get notified about are texts and phone calls. Not even emails, I don't get notified. Social media, I don't get notified. Literally nothing else. No reminders, no nothing. So most of the time when I turn it on, it's there's not even anything there and there's nothing like pulling me in, like look at me, look at me, because there's nothing going on and I'm not even realizing that I'm missing anything. And if I need to check my email, I'll go on my laptop to do so. So those are just a few hacks that I hope are helpful for you, as well as everything that I will not be buying this year. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I do hope to add this to a sort of simple living series. So let me know what other videos you'd like to see in that series. I would love to make more in the future. And I'd also love to hear from you in the comments. Let me know maybe something that you don't buy or even just a fun fact about yourself. YouTube can sometimes be very one-sided, but I want to hear from you guys too. That means so much when you comment and let me know really anything what's going on or maybe a fun fact about yourself. I would love to hear. I will also leave the link down in the description box for you to check out my artwork if you are interested in that. I hope you all are doing well. Thanks again for being here and watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye.